I'd like to welcome each and everybody that's watching as well as those that are here today. Um, this is our final study group on the book of Ephesians. And we have not a very long passage to discuss, but it's a great, it's a great passage to end our study together. As we begin our study today, I'm going to ask Diane to have a word of prayer for our time together. Would you, Diane? Mm -hmm. Kind Father, we're grateful to meet together and to share this uh, by video. Your word, our Holy Spirit, bless us each today as we study your word because you're talking to us through your word. And we pray to you that you embolden our characters strengthen our minds, and above all, Father, keep us trusting and faithful to your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, each one of you, for being participants in our study. Um, you know, under no, no, normal times, we usually have uh, quite a crowd, and we usually meet in one of our local restaurants. These are a few samples from our Perkins group, our Perkins restaurant. And typically, um, we have our small group studies starting in the fall, sometime in late September, and we go till about the middle of May. So today is the last of our studies for the season. We'll be taking a break for the summer, and hopefully by this fall, by September, we will be able to meet once again at our favorite spots, if not Perkins, some other restaurant in the area. So I'd like to invite those who are watching, um, if you're living in the area of Kalispell and would like to join us, please contact, um, contact me or contact our church and ask where one of our Bible study groups is meeting and you can perhaps join us this fall. Uh, we'll be praying that that is a reality soon. So this is usually done on a Wednesday, or it's a Thursday rather, a Thursday group uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon at Perkins. Don't know if that will be our time in the fall and if we'll be meeting there, but we hope to. So an invitation. And if, if anybody would like to, if you're out of town and you're coming into town, would like to join one of our study groups and just experience this, uh, please give us a call. We'd love to welcome you. All right, let's turn in, in our Bibles to Ephesians and the sixth chapter. And we just got done talking about the armament that God had given us. And we will be finishing up the chapter. Um, I'm going to have us back up um, and talk a little bit about verse 18, which was the final piece of armor that the armor of God had, which is prayer. And we likened it last time to a lance that would the Roman soldiers had. But I thought we could share a little bit about this important item as we come to the close. Because if we leave people with anything today, I hope we can leave them with an, an inspiration to, to use God. God's weapon of prayer. All of us have people we're praying for. So let's start off, and I'm going to have, Leroy, would you lead us with verses 18 and 19 and 20? 18, 19, and 20 of Ephesians chapter 6. six. And this is from the New King James. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak okay so Paul he's he's talking about there and he starts talking about to pray in the spirit how, how, how much? 
Always. 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 You know, now, some people say, but Pastor, I, I just can't pray all the time. Well, maybe that's because we have a misunderstanding of what prayer really mm-hmm. is. You see, I don't know about you, but any of you ever pray silently? Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Any of you ever had to pray real fast over something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you don't even say any words. You just think those words mm-hmm. like, God help. God help me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Silent prayer is okay. my favorite. I mean, that's... Right. Well, the devil can't it's read a, our minds. It's thought in your mind. Mm-hmm. And, and the, you know, the devil can't read our minds or our heart. Right. But he can hear us. And sometimes it's best to pray out loud to tell the devil, that, hey, I'm not following you anymore. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's one of the things that <clears throat> we can pray in all, all sorts of situ- situations. There's times that if you were to pray out loud, people would resent it and resist it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, you can pray in your mind for somebody who wouldn't appreciate prayers if they were verbal, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. NIV says, and on all occasions. Yes. So there's no limit to when you exactly. should be praying. Exactly. Or how all occasions. And so we, we use this <clears throat> as an opportunity to say, you know, there's nothing that I don't, I'm not invited to pray about. Mm-hmm. I can That's pray right. about everything. That's right. I'm reminded of uh, a good friend of ours when I was a new pastor, a young pastor. And my wife and I were young. And there was a lady in our church that was basically deaf. Okay, mm-hmm. she had the only ear thing that she used was a huge one of these big dials. Mm-hmm. Little ones in her ears didn't work oh. anymore. Had to carry a big dial going to both. To, picked up sound and amplified, I don't know all the things. But um, Betty was a very special person, a prayer warrior, I'd call her. Mm-hmm. And she, she'd been, a, tr- she'd been an ed- a, a lower grade teacher until she lost her hearing. You can't do very well teaching if you can't hear your kids. And uh, so she turned to two activities that meant a lot to her besides raising her own teenage children. Uh, she loved to carve wood. Mm. And she made beautiful wood carvings, but not just huh. of things so much. Her wood carvings were always about God and telling a story or explaining something. She loved to take a verse in the Bible and make a wood carving to illustrate it. Mm. And I'll, I'll, and she's, I, she's still alive this, to this day, and I want desperately to see her again. She and her husband live a couple states away. But anyway, I always remember a wood carving she did around the concept of the Sabbath. Mm. And how many letters are there in the word Sabbath? Seven. Seven. And so she she carved out of wood a letter, the shape of a letter. But inside that shape, she then carved... Um, an illustration or a picture as it were of a miracle that God did on the Sabbath. Now guess how many, how many miracles are recorded on the Sabbath in the Bible? Seven. Okay? And so each one of these letters in, held within it another miracle that Christ did on one of his seven healings on the Sabbath. And each one describes something about the human need uh, that needs healing. Mm-hmm. And here she did all of this work and had this huge wow. wood carving mounted. It was on, on, a, on a, a conference office wall. And uh, you walk in there, and it, as a young pastor, I'd walk in there. And she told me about it, but I'd walk in in front of it, and I'd look at it, and I'd gain a sermon every time I, I watched it. All right? And so, you know, here it is that Paul mm-hmm. is is giving this idea of praying in all times, in all forms. And Betty was a classic example of a prayer, prayer warrior. I loved it because she had two teenage kids, and teenage kids are at that t- stage of life. And her son, I remember, uh, knew that he, Betty would always go down, and she always had a little closet, she called it, 
I called it just a spot. Mm -hmm. She had, they'd rent a home and if there was a basement, she'd find the stairs going down to the basement and stack up some boxes underneath the stairs and on the other side of them it would be her prayer room. Mm -hmm. And she would be, she had to fix that up in there, a little tiny spot, and she'd go and pray. And uh, I always smiled because her son, teenage son, came home one day and just said, Mom, stop praying for me. <laughs> I know you're praying, and I can't do what I want to do. <laughs> well, now how successful do you think that request was? Yeah. No way. He might not have heard her pray, but he knew his mom was praying for him. There's a really excellent Christian movie out there called War Room. Right. Good one up That there. is a great movie because this lady has a closet that yes. that's where she goes. Exactly. And do battle with the devil. And so pray always in all situations, using all kinds of prayer, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, that is one of the greatest things that we can do for each other. We can pray. Absolutely. And what a, what a blessing that is. Especially when sometimes we pray and then we're surprised when God answers. Yes. <laughs> I'm not anymore. No. And, you know. But it is a marvel when you see is. how he worked. Yes. I've we have told. that individual we've prayed for and, and how things have just lined up in yes. his life that yep. no one could even conceive would happen. Oh. Yes. Yeah. It was it was beyond yes. reason when we were yeah. praying for yeah. our friend yeah. Ron. Yeah. yeah, and uh, the prayers answered in the last four years. That's us unbelievable. Too. Exactly. Us too. Yeah. So, and it just doesn't stop with one or two people. It just mm -mm. keeps going. Mm -mm. All right. And so we're told to, you know, just to keep on praying for all of God's people. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but uh, more and more, one of the things about older age, as we get older, sometimes I, I have some of my members say, "Look, you know, I don't know why the Lord." keeps me around. I can't do what I did anymore. And I said, yeah. have you discovered that your gift may be prayer? Mm. You know, sometimes when we're older, we can't do some of the things we once did physically. But I haven't found a saint yet that can't pray. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm moving toward that stage myself. So <laughs> there's some days I lay in bed before I get up and I just start praying. Mm -hmm. Or if you're awake at night, mm -hmm. You start praying for people. And, you know, it's interesting. When, when God starts knowing that you take this business of prayer seriously, sometimes he starts calling on you, asking you to pray. Mm -hmm. And he starts asking you to pray more mm -hmm. for people. And he will do that. He, he'll flash a picture in your mind of an individual and yep. pray for them right now. Exactly. Lord, yep. I don't know what's going on, but... Please bless and be with, keep them strong, keep them safe. And occasionally you find out later why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That God did that on purpose, yes. Yep. And I've told people, you know, you know, we all have gifts or talents. And people have told me, oh, I don't have a gift, I don't have a talent. Can you pray? Well, not very good. Don't well, develop then, it. Yeah. <laughs> Your gift. If you have no gift that you can identify, pray. Right. That is a gift. And you'll either identify a new gift or you, that will become a gift. One of the well, two. Well, exactly. The passage doesn't say it has to be great. A <laughs> great, great prayer. No. no. It just has to, it just says do it. The best prayer is one that comes from the heart. Yeah. And it doesn't, yeah. And and it, it doesn't uh, require any form. But we it doesn't require a anything, really. We have examples. Daniel, Moses, Paul, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Read through those <laughs> prayers. Right. And that gives you a starting point. Yeah. You know, I, I believe that God wants to hear our prayers. Yep. And it's not like we have to pray certain words. People tell me, I don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, first of all, do you know how to talk with somebody who's like a friend? Yeah. Well, then talk to him <laughs> like he's your friend. Yeah. Talk to him about your day. Talk yeah. to him about... It. Sometimes people think, well, you've got to talk a certain way to God. <laughs> Why? Where do we get that from? Okay. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows our personality. 
So isn't it just best to be us yeah. and to talk with them that way? And to know that the Holy Spirit will interpret if right. we are not saying something right, the Holy Spirit will present it to God. And sometimes we, we're not sure that we like that, I'm sure, because sometimes God, sometimes what we pray for is not quite what, what God had in mind, right? But he always has the best thing in mind. Yep. Amen. All right, so verse 19, Paul says, Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, given me, so that I will speak fearlessly, that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel mm -hmm. for which I am an ambassador in chains. Mm -hmm. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Wow, you stop and you think, we do know from this book. By the way, Ephesians is the most <coughs> impersonal book of all of Paul's writings. Why? When well, we talked about that earlier, it was written, a uh, fancy word is that, as an encyclical. Well, what's that mean? It means it was a, 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 it was a letter to be passed around to different people. It wasn't for one specific group mm -hmm. only. And so he didn't get into a lot of personal stuff about who he's writing it to. He does expose about himself a little bit that he is currently a prisoner. We know that. Um, he wrote it without giving too many details attached to the time right there because he knew it would be a while that this book would be passed around. Mm -hmm. And so... He's just saying, pray that I may declare the gospel fearlessly. Well, why would, why might he be faced with fear? He's in chains. Yeah. And <clears throat> the chance of his being freed is about zero. Just about zero. <laughs> yeah. And so he is facing execution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's easy when our lives are very tenuous. Um, we it's easy to, for Satan to try to tempt us to be afraid. And so he's, he's saying, no, pray that I speak fearlessly. Boldly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And here he is. I've been, he's giving, being given the opportunity to stand before Caesar. And he wants to make sure that when he gets his opportunity to speak, that he will do it boldly and courageously so that Caesar himself will be a witness to what God's gospel can do. I re wow. remember reading the biography of Martin Luther. Yes. And before he had to go in, he asked for 24 hours to prepare his... Response. Response. Yeah. And so praying and counting on God, giving the words to speak boldly, because he did not want to back out of his stand. Right which when that pressure comes, that prison, that execution, people can falter. <clears throat> and only Christ can stand beside us and give us the words, give us the strength to be that faithful mm -hmm. unto death. Right. And so he is asking for prayers. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think this is a time that I would like to suggest that it's always good to pray for your spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. I need to pray for them. I, I can tell you as a pastor, I really do want my members praying for me because, uh, you know, I'm a human being. Yeah. And I have weaknesses and flaws. And it's a fearful thing to stand up and try to, to preach a sermon in, to a group of people and say, this is supposed to be, we're supposed to be speaking forth for God. We're supposed to be giving something to these people that they come. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the crowd you have, the more fearful responsibility is because you're not just wasting time if you aren't. You are actually taking up time that should was dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. So it is a wonderful thing. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your teachers. Uh, pray for your leaders. Yes, our deacons, our deaconesses, everybody in our church, pray for them. They need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go into verses 21 and 22. Uh, Tom, would you read verses 21? Tychicus, Tychicus, Tychicus. Yes. Tychicus, the, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you also know, may know, how I am and what I'm doing. 
I'm sending him to you for this very purpose that you may know how we are. Okay. So, by the way, this uh, Tai Chi Kus, or whatever we call him, is, you know, it's foreign tai to us, but, yeah. but uh, he's also the one that's carrying the letter to the Colossians, we know. Mm. And it's, they probably, these two letters went at the same time with the same person. And so that gives us a little insight that... Um, um, Tychicus is, is one who is with Paul and Paul is personally entrusted with delivering these letters. Mm -hmm. It's a friend, a dear brother, a faithful servant in the Lord, he says, and he's going to let you know in all the details about how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Paul is entrusting this information and all to Tychicus. So, so in other words, he was pretty close to Paul. Absolutely. If he was going to know how yes. he really was. He was he was one of the Christians that was ministering to Paul, even during Paul's prison time. And by know. his name we could assume he was a Roman. Could be, yes, yes. So all right. And so that might be that might be some of the fruit of Paul's labor already in Rome. Mm -hmm. Who knows? And the last uh, little bit of verse twenty two. Yeah is in the New King James, that he may comfort your hearts. <clears throat> because people are worried about him. Yes. You know, and it, has he been slain already? Has he been beaten? Is he... Is, has, he has he given up? Has he, is he, yeah, is yeah, he eating? Yeah. Are they feeding him? You know, what's happening to him? Yeah. NIV is in courage. Yeah. I like comforting your heart. Because when you, you have a sore spot right. in your heart for people that are right. under the gun. Mm -hmm. So, especially when you see the people that are perhaps martyrs, people that are being persecuted, knowing mm -hmm. that there are Christians today that are suffering persecution, many are in prison mm -hmm. right now, we ourselves need to be praying for them. And mm -hmm. uh, God would want to encourage our hearts in that way as mm -hmm. well. All right. And now we get down to the last two verses of the book. Um, Peace to the brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God, the Father, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. And here Paul, is at the close of his letter, he returns to some of the great terms in the Christian gospel. Mm -hmm. Notice what they are. Peace. peace. What sort of peace? Yeah, love faith. and grace and faith. Mm -hmm. These are the core things, the characteristics of our experience with Christ. And he said brothers, which yes. family. Yes. We are family. So as, as Paul brings this full circle back again, we, we like to remember how he started off Ephesians and what was the purpose of Ephesians? Well, in Ephesians, remember, he the theme of Ephesians, there's a couple things, but the main overriding one is God is unifying everything through himself, through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the first three verse, the chapters of the book are talking about God unifying people to himself through Jesus. And the last three continue it on with the idea of God's using the church in this process to unify and bring peace, mm -hmm. hope, faith, all of this into this world. So one of the main things that God has brought is called us out of the world in a sense to unify us to himself. The main reason he's done that is so that we become agents of God to bring a unifying in, a spirit and influence on our world around us. Because what's the opposite of that? The devil's work, which is chaos, and destruction, and destruction, mm -hmm. fighting. Yes, violence, Today's hate. Time. Yeah. Yeah. What and, we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. And so we see that. That's a very current topic in our life. Mm -hmm. whether it's politics, whether it's health, whether it's family, social issues, 
you know, all of this, we live in a divided world. And here, by the grace of God, we've been called into unity with him. And we've been experiencing God's goodness in our lives. He's equipped us. He's even equipped us with armament to fight off what Satan's attacks are, mm. all so that we can go out and promote God's unifying influence. Peace, mm. grace, faith, and love. Mm. And, you know, one of the things, that, the key things about the church, we're called to love one another. Remember what he told the disciples? They'll know you're my disciples by your love. Mm -hmm. And so our challenge today is, Lord, help us to fully take in your love so that we can turn around and give that love back mm -hmm. to you and to others, your children, in an undying love forever. All yep. right? Mm -hmm. Well, good. He speaks of being an ambassador. Yes. And he I, changed. Yeah. Yes. But he's still an ambassador. Yes. Right. Nobody, nobody took away his appointment. He's in the he's, chains of God. Yeah. And I want you to look at from, you know, verse 14 to the end, how many times he uses that little word, all. 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 Yes. There's five times that I've counted. But it's important when he uses that word all. Yeah. Yes, that's a really neat thing. All in, very inclusive. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. Other thoughts before we close the, today? I like the first three chapters because it tells, it tells the story of what God has done for us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what he is doing for us as far as getting us to heaven. I mean, he adopted us and now he's building us up for his inheritance right. to be given out to us. And that's in the first three chapters. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think people forget that God adopted us as his children. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the, in the rat race of time, I think people have just forgotten that. And what that adoption means, the patia protestus, Yes. Potestes. Right. Patera. Yeah. Pot Potestes. Yes. Yeah. That means that yeah. he's in charge. Yeah. He's yeah. the father of us all and he has, he, he owns us. He controls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And like you said, the first three chapters being what they are means a lot because it tells us what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. The last three chapters are typical Paul. He always summarizes put this into practice mm -hmm. yeah right. right this is You're, how you do it this is what now because of what God has done this is what we can do for God thank goodness he does that yes because otherwise we'd be hanging up there we're still stuck on that yeah mm -hmm. all right well as we close let's have a word of prayer that God will indeed use us to be that unifying agent as well father in heaven again we thank you for this time we've had together Amen. I thank you for the book of Ephesians because it gives such a clear message. A message of what you're doing for us and in us and through us. You're bringing us together, reuniting us again. You're creating all things new. And Lord, help us today as we go forward to remember to restore that to uh, the message to people. There's so much division in our world so much tearing apart lord use your grace in our lives to build people up and build them together in jesus name amen